welcome back to a City Platter Plays City Builders, where we are building the City of Bluffside Crossing. And today, uh, you probably expected to see some snow after my last video, and we're going to get there in the next video. But in this one, there are some things I want to clean up uh, before we enter uh, uh, winter. So, uh, obviously, uh, we're not anywhere near where we were before, but I want to start to, to reflect on where we've come as a city. And uh, at the beginning of each episode, I'm going to show a cutscene uh, or a, a cinematic of a place that we've been. So this is Mount Hood, and uh, I just wanted to show you how it's developed. And it, it's, it's, it's a really attractive area. I'm pleased with how it turned out. So uh, I, I think the commenter uh, that, that recommended this, I think it's a good idea, and I think I'm going to stick with it. Now with that, um, today's episode is going to be focusing on building the lake cabins. And we're going to do that uh, just at the bottom of the, of the bluff from Chest, uh, Chestnut Ranch. Uh, and we're going to remedy a number of other things as well. Uh, so I want to start out um, building this this cabin area. And I'm going to pause it because I'm going to need... Actually, uh, I won't pause it. I'll let it run. So what I'm going to start with, I want to be able to look at the terrain. And I want to um, ideally... So if we take a look. If we're really low you don't see a ton of the city. So I want to make sure that my road is as low and close to the water as it can be. And I think that's where someone at a cabin would want to be anyway. They'd want to vacation close to the water, not up above the water. So by getting lower, we'll make sure that the shoreline is usable. Further, the higher up we go, the more city you see. And I want to avoid that if at all possible. So. I want to build a dirt road. I want to make this not a very desirable path to travel, but still an option for someone uh, that would want to, to, to come down this way. I also want to make sure that I have uh, two ways in, uh, or two ways out, uh, depending on, your, I guess, your, your point of view. So that's going to be a little tricky. It's going to be easy to make one connection. I think I could fairly simply make a connection over in this part of the city. And I, I actually think I am going to pause it for a little bit, I think. Uh, so I can easily make a connection here, come down and, and make my way around. The second connection is going to be the challenging one. And I was thinking it might work to go up here, but the grades are tough and there's not really a, a good way to weave around there. So I might try to make it work here, going back and forth to get back up. So that's where I'm going to start because that's going to be the most challenging part of this entire uh, build. Okay, and now I think we're finally at a grade that would be appropriate. Um, so you can kind of see to be able to get down there, I had to do quite a bit of weaving. So it's it's a, it's a little bit of a little bit of a challenge to make that work. I don't want to zone anywhere in this area, so I am going to turn off zoning and not just zoning. I don't want plopping there either. This is just going to be kind of an area where you, you drive to get back to where you need to go. So it'll be a nice rustic country drive there, I guess. So for the rest of this, I'm going to try to stay as close to the shore as I can while still allowing enough room for a lot to develop. So each of these lines is one foot, which I'm guessing many of you know, but if not, that's what it is so or I guess maybe not a foot in this game it'd be a meter um, so generally with contour lines you're gonna want to be able to count them and see how far so uh, you have an understanding of the grade in the, in the particular area now we're probably gonna need to do a little bit of smoothing a little bit of move it to, to clean this up and you know I'm, I'm truthfully not Incredibly pleased with how this is turning out so far. So we'll probably have to do some terraforming to make it a little closer to what I was expecting. One of the challenges that I'm seeing right now is 
the roads are actually bringing the, the, the grade up, which is not what I wanted. I wanted the road to sink to the grade. So that's a challenge that we'll have to work through. kind of see this is a pretty steep slope to get down. Not ideal, I might try to clean that up a little bit. And that's still very steep, but at least the grades are a little bit, uh, uh, or, or the, the drop and slope is a little more dispersed. It's probably a better way of handling it. That would be a lot of grading to make this happen. And my guess is, in this type of area, you wouldn't see that grading happen, particularly for a dirt road. Uh, but for ease here, I'm going to explain why you wouldn't do that and then do it anyway. <laughs> so, um, I'm just gonna soften a little bit of this. Uh, so I'm really unhappy with where the roads ended up in this area. So I am going to lower the height of almost all of these roads. I want it to be very close to the shore level. So what I'm going to do now is just take the rest of these and, uh, and mirror that height. Okay, so this is a lot better. This is more along the lines of what I was hoping for. And we might even be able to get a walking trail up. Not that there's a ton that you'd want to walk to, so now that I'm saying it, I feel a little silly. Uh, but you can see, now that you know, we'll turn this on and make sure there's no flooding issues, it just is a much nicer place. And there's a little bit of flooding. We're going to be okay. Um, it's just a little bit more rational. If you were going to build a cabin, you would want it to be as close to the water as possible or far away from the water, not kind of at a height where uh, you're wondering why you're not closer. <laughs> so there are a couple different ways that we're going to populate cabins. Uh, first and foremost, you know, we can go into the nature reserve, uh, uh, Park Life DLC, and grab some cabins from there. So you'll see that there are these lean-to shelters. That's not really what we're looking for. Fishing cabins. That could be what we're looking for. Hunting cabin, that's probably a lot more like what we're looking for. And then hunting cabin too. And then I pulled a couple assets in as well. But I am noticing that we're gonna struggle placing these because of the water. So double-edged sword of, of what I did is now that I've put the water here, um, or now that I put the road this close to the water, now you can't build a cabin. So. I'm going to do a little bit of smoothing along the shore, like in targeted areas, if I can't place a decent number of cabins. So I'm going to place some cabins now. We'll see what I can do. So I would place these fishing cabins, but I, I honestly have a little bit of a problem with the fact that they have these steps that go up it just looks weird to me and maybe that's just the personal bias based on where i live i guess if i lower it maybe they're not so bad that's not so bad i'm okay with that okay so we'll do a couple of those oh so from the last video i did forget dynamic weather so i think we're just gonna have some weather this video. <laughs> so kidding, we are not going to uh, have weather. Uh, we had weather and dynamic, uh, uh, and, and the day-night cycle, so clearly that makes things a little bit challenging to build in an area where there's no light, so. Modification. Okay, so there are large stretches where I can't place anything. 
So I am going to go and try to remedy that by uh, smoothing out the terrain just a little bit and hopefully making a little bit more land where I can do something. Because <laughs> right now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty limited. So I'm much happier with this. There's a lot more going on. And what I think I want to do now is place a couple of docks and uh, you know, kind of a place where we would expect people to congregate. Ooh, something like a riding stable might be neat too. Actually, uh, picnic tables at each of the camp or each of the areas would be nice as well. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of landscaping around here and uh, make things look a little bit more natural. Before I finish up with that, the uh, indicators for a lack of water are driving me crazy, so I'm going to remedy those. And power might also be a little bit of a challenge out here. Uh, you know, on a rustic road like, like this, I think our preference would be to not have any power lines. But the reality is, things are just so spread out out here. Unless we're burying power lines, which doesn't make a lot of sense, unless there's a significant amount of density because of the added cost, you're going to have overhead lines. So in this area, that's precisely what we're going to have. Now I am going to follow this road for the water so that we have a loop. Let's take a look at our power situation. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but we're gonna have to bring power to this area. Okay, so now we can finish up our landscaping. Okay, and I think this is going to turn out very nicely. I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. I did add quite a bit of landscaping, and the main purpose of that is if you if this were your cabin, first of all, you might be driving that car, <laughs> pulling up to your cabin, yeah, especially if it were this large and with a view of the water like that. Uh, but you want some privacy, and the landscaping is really how you get that. So I think that this is a pretty natural looking cabin area. I did provide some rentals and apparently the ruffians in the area are getting down here and graffitiing up the uh, jet ski rental. I don't <laughs> see that as a, a really realistic thing, but it's happening. <laughs> um, yeah, so we kind of come around and I, to me, I, and I apologize for all of the trees, but I think it's good that there are all these trees. All right, there is a little bit of standing water here. I don't love that. So I'm just gonna eliminate that. Which, unfortunately for this person, means that they're gonna get flooded. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this turned out really well. So I think we're good here. And this would just be a nice vacation uh, home type place. Let's see how it looks from outside of there. You can't really see 
that they're tucked back there, which is exactly what I was hoping for. It looks pretty natural. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. I think it's good. I think it's very, very good. All right. So I mentioned that there are some things that I want to fix before we move into our uh, Snowfall DLC. Well, first of all, we've got problems. Whoa, academic year report. Um, great. <laughs> It's getting uglier. <laughs> we will, uh, we will uh, get rid of that for now. One of the things that I really want to remedy is with this fairground. There are people that are just walking in over here, and I think I know a way to fix that. That you know, uh, it might be controversial. Maybe it won't be. Uh, there's no real reason to have this be a collector road with trees lining it it's really acting as an arterial so I think we should formalize that by making it a national highway and if we were to do that that would prevent all pedestrians from walking up this road so that would also prevent people from being able to walk to their uh, job in the mines but I don't think that that's really much of a problem we don't have any stops here uh, for the bus so why not make it a highway? I could obviously smooth this out a little bit. Maybe it'll do just a little bit. It's a little better. Um, but that should solve all of the problems with people walking in, because where do you go now? Nowhere. <laughs> the connection's pretty janky now. Maybe I'll make it a little bit better. But I think I've just managed to make it worse. So maybe uh, maybe the best way to, to fix it would be to actually make it a dirt road leading up here. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be the best way to, to remedy it. So a couple things to fix to make this a little better. So I'm just going to fix up these path connections. And then though it's totally unnecessary at this point, I will make some connections. Okay, now what I'm noticing is that there are absolutely no pedestrians using this, except for this lady who's kind of just hanging out. <laughs> so that might be a node controller sort of uh, uh, sort of issue to remedy. It's a funny story. Uh, I went to add a sidewalk connection through Primrose Drive and uh, I crashed. So I will not be using node controller to add a sidewalk through here. Uh, so I had to go and rebuild some of the stuff I built before, um, but I built it almost I, exactly the same. So I'm, I'm okay with where it's at. So I'm going to continue where I was, and what we need to do now is, is use Traffic Manager to get rid of parking on Primrose Drive and Graham Street, because people are using that now as the entrance into, uh, into the facility, which is not what I was anticipating. Okay, and that should load up our parking lot, because now you can't park anywhere else besides the buildings, which is what I was hoping for. Okay, so good. We've got people parking in the parking lot to get to the fair, which means that we should actually be making some money now. Okay, it's a lot better. It's, it's, I think we we're making $10 income before. Uh, 18 times that, uh, I'll, I'll take that as a win. So, next problem, not enough raw materials. Huh. I'm not going to worry about that. I did take away a little bit of the um, the gravel in here. I know that that was a problem that some people had with what I built in the previous build. Uh, the last thing I want to do to the fair besides try to figure out why this is a safety nightmare uh, is, is at a... Uh, two things. Number one, we need some outhouses. So I got these great porta potties that I'm going to... Uh, add to the fairgrounds. So I think we might add those 
Got a row of them near the farm animals and we'll need some over here as well. Wow, we have a ton of cars coming on this road. This is not at all what is supposed to happen. So vehicle restrictions. We just want to basically ban all of these vehicles that shouldn't be here. Okay, and that should hopefully resolve our issues. Now everyone has to leave through the gate and get to their car. Perfect. What is that doing to us financially? Even better. Perfect. Great. So people can't walk out, get to their car. Cops are trapped. <laughs> Not so perfect, but it works. There's a weird little jaunt in the road that I'd like to try to clean up if I can. A little better. Okay, so the last thing I want to put in here is uh, something that you see a lot at at uh, county fairs, at least in uh, in rural areas, and that's demolition derbies. So I think. This doesn't necessarily need to be within the fairgrounds. Uh, it just needs to be in close proximity to the fair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna actually build a dirt road off the parking lot. Bring that down around and place the building here. Now we'll need to do some terraforming to make this work. But it is Bluffside Crossing, so what would it be without a bit of terraforming? <laughs> I know I started out really apprehensive about terraforming, and as I've played through, I've gotten pretty loosey-goosey with it. <laughs> and that's just because there's a lot I want to do here, and just I don't want my apprehension to terraforming and paying for terraforming. Even though it's cheap in the game, I know in real life it's not. Um, so it makes me really reluctant to do too much. But sometimes it's necessary. This would be one of those times. Okay, so now we would have nice. So let's make this derby road. So this demolition derby, I guess, will fill up with. Uh, cars if given enough time. I do want to, now that I've been so careful with parking restrictions, make sure that we're not allowing parking here. That would be the last thing I'd want people to start parking there uh, because they can. So uh, there's a lot of police issues at this point. I mean, there's a lot of other issues too uh, within the city, but I think police is one of the primary issues. And one of the reasons I think we're seeing that is we don't have a police helicopter depot. So I'm thinking that we need to get one of these at this point in time. Now, if I were citing one of these, there'd be a couple considerations I'd have. Number one, I want it to be in a, a place that's relatively flat and relatively central. Well, clearly downtown is most central and putting the helicopter depot there is a no-go. Uh, so number two, where is cheap land? cheap land is probably over here nothing can really be built in this area so we could reasonably break my hierarchy rules that I normally try to follow and bring a dirt road up here that's not going to attract much of anything we'll have stoplight there we, we won't allow stoplights okay so we have a nice clean road there and then let's get our police depot over here and this is actually going to be a place that would be good for our fire department depot as well so I th uh, or, or fire department uh, uh yeah fire helicopter depot as well so i think we're going to try to site this over there although we might need to terraform more for this building Pretty significant grades there, but that's completely acceptable. The part that's not going to be fun is getting power over here. I don't want it to be ugly, but it might be. Um, 
And I just unfortunately, the only other thing I could do, oh, is connect up over here. Perfect. Need to get water here as well. Less challenging. Got pipes in the road. Okay, so these will help immensely, I'm hoping anyway, in getting some of the problems that we have resolved. I want to take a look though. We have, we have good jail capacity, that's good. Because that was the next thing I was thinking about. Um, but let's look at our coverage. And I'm noticing that maybe one of the reasons we have bad coverage over here is this police department is being forced to serve this neighborhood. So we do have a fire department over here and I think that we're going to add a police department right next to that to serve this area and a large one because it has quite a bit of area to cover okay so we've got that um, next thing I want to think about a little bit is trash collection so I'm, I'm noticing that there are trash collection issues cropping up here and there so let's take a look at that and this is likely a direct result of eliminating some of the trash collection facilities over here. You can kind of see that there aren't areas that, there are no areas that aren't covered, but there are a number of areas that aren't covered well. So I might just double up over here and have and add a few more trash collection facilities in this area. Maybe some large recycling centers or center, I should say, not centers. And that should help out quite a bit. Okay, now one of the things I saw in the comments was that there were trees in the road in this neighborhood. And I'm not seeing it, and I think maybe that's parking. Uh, but truthfully, I'm okay not having a ton of parking in this area. Most of the homes, it looks like, have significant amounts of parking so that's fine uh, I don't love that tree uh, uh, roads with street trees in this game don't have parking I think it, that, that that's that's completely unreasonable um, that said we are gonna live in the, in the world of unreasonable there because uh, street trees are an important thing for for all cities okay we just wanted to fix this roundabout we should look at the other end as well because I've done some work here, I know that it lost all of its uh, property. So I fixed those. Good there. Hopefully trash collection is resolved over here at some point. Okay. And then last but not least, actually two things I want to remedy. Um, a while back, someone pointed out that I put absolutely no parking in the university area, including near this stadium that is crazy so i want to fix that we need at least one parking lot and probably more uh, reasonably but because we don't have space at this point really to put in surface parking i think structured is probably our best bet so i am going to sneak in a structured parking lot ramp over here Rico's causing some issues here, so... Okay, that fixes it. And then we're gonna want one more serving the university, maybe a little bit further away. I think this is gonna be a good location for that. Unfortunately, again, eliminating some buildings. Parking is a reason why that could happen, though. Honestly, this is another okay location. I would prefer that it's not off the collector, but it is near the dorms, so it would be important to have parking near the dorms. Truthfully, I think I think I was a little skimpy on the dorms. We could have some more. I, think I have four. And through the glory of movement, we will make this work. All right, it's not perfect, but it is pretty darn good. I'm sure that would be a very thrilling place to live right by the parking ramp, but it's certainly a, a necessity. So this will help out quite a bit. The other thing I'm noticing 
is a lot of problems with death care. So this is something that always plagues me in the game. Um, I think it's not so much about capacity because you can see I have insane capacity. But the AI is not great about it. So you end up with one death in some random place really far away and uh, it derails your entire death care system. So I am going to place one death care facility I'm on this entryway into this neighborhood over here. Hopefully that helps out a little bit. We also have no death care over in this industrial area and that might not seem to be a, a very intuitive place to place it, but if someone dies at work, well, now we're traveling. Now, this also has good access to the interstate, so presumably that could relieve some of the issues in this area should any crop up. And our new neighborhood doesn't have death care either, so we're gonna need to add that as a facility. And I hate to keep just adding these on this collector. However, uh, it, it, it does work. I have anarchy on, so I'm gonna take that off. Ideally, this wouldn't be on a collector. Ideally, this would be on a local, but it'll do the trick. We're not gonna build anything back here anyway. And as far as collectors go, Middle Avenue is probably a lower uh, volume collector road. So um, we're good there. Last, last, last but not least, hopefully some of these issues that we've tried to remedy resolve themselves over time. We have our beautiful solar array that's been very controversial. Um, let's take a look at our power needs. So we are way over producing, which is fine. We have no substations uh, to, to regulate power. So that's what I want to place right now. Okay, so that will act as our battery storage area. It's really just for looks. I think it produces a little bit of power. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's for looks to, to, to make us feel a little bit better about having all this solar. When we go to winter, our power needs are gonna go through the roof, and this is likely not gonna be enough. And just intuitively, we should know that it doesn't make a ton of, of, of sense to only have um, solar energy. So we might wanna look at nuclear or something like that. Uh, I do wanna relocate this water tower as well not something that you really could do in real life but it was in the way it was a it was poor planet uh, you can see the shadows the way it's going to cast shadows is directly onto the solar panels so it doesn't make a ton of sense it's not something that you would see happen so there are other things i'd love to build like a military base as as, as, as i mentioned got to find some assets for that but for the time being i think we've at least got this back into a place that is a little bit more reasonable um, we have some issues. I will look to see if simming helps the, uh, that out at all. Ooh, we're finally seeing some industrial activity in our neighborhood over here. So that's good to hear. Good to see. Not here. Um, I guess you're hearing it from me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's it for today. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. This is going to be the last green beautiful green episode of uh, uh, Bluffside Crossing for a while because our next episode will be using Snowfall DLC. We're going to have a lot of work to get Bluffside Crossing ready for that in the first episode, most of which will be paused so we don't kill the city. Uh, we don't have any heating right now. Uh, we don't have any snow removal facility uh, or snow storage. And there are going to be other things that we're going to want to look at as well. Um, in addition, we're not going to do a lot of building in the winter. Um, we're going to do a lot of fixing. So uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, hit the notification bell. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.